Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. I actually was going to do a tutorial on how to use Liquify in Photoshop. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought that really it's, it's a tool that is misused more often than it's used properly. Uh, you probably have seen images of Instagram models and they're taking a um, selfie of themselves in a bathroom and they have this just totally unrealistically skinny waist. And you could see like the tiles in the bathroom behind them kind of bent in because they used Liquify, but they didn't know actually how to use it properly. So the uh, tiles got bent in as well, or they're in front of a fence uh, and the fence is all warped and distorted. Anyway, I was thinking of doing a video uh, demonstrating how to properly use Liquify, but I decided against it. Instead, we're going to do a video on how to use Liquify to just have fun, to do something that's obviously done to make an image look cartoony, different. Now, if you want me to do a real tutorial on Liquify, uh, let me know in the comments below. But so far, I'm kind of thinking I'm not going to do it, but just let me know and I may change my mind. Now we're, as I said, going to have fun with Liquify. Uh, this is something that um, you're not misrepresenting uh, yourself or the person that you're, uh, you're using Liquify on. You're just obviously making, look at, making them look like a caricature of themselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the background layer on my Mac, hit Command-J, Control-J on a PC, and we're going to send this image right into Liquify. We're going to go up to Filter and down to Liquify. And it then will open the image up in Liquify. Now, uh, the latter versions of Lightroom, or I'm sorry, the latter versions of Photoshop now have face detect on it, and it has a lot of controls uh, for you to... Uh, change different parts of a person's face. So you could see that on the right, it automatically opened Face Aware Liquify. And with it, I could change the size of, let's say, her eyes. And we could go individually. Uh, here is her right eye. You can see I'm making it larger and smaller. And here is her left eye. Or if you hit this little chain link right in the middle, we'll lock them together and then we could make them bigger. And in this case, we're gonna, I'm not gonna say we're gonna make it look anime, but I'm going for the large eye kind of anime look. Um, I'll lock eye height as well and we'll could make their, the upper part of her eye and the lower part of her eye bigger, makes her eyes bigger basically, the same as eye size. Uh, we'll go with eye width and lock that as well. And we'll kind of make them, oops, We'll make them bigger as well. So we're making her eyes very unrealistically large. And uh, eye tilt, if we lock that as well, we could tilt her eyes. But I don't think I really like the tilt. So I think we'll leave that at zero. So I'll just type in zero. Now eye distance, I'm not sure here. Maybe we'll just put them a little further apart like that. Uh, nose height. So you could just experiment, basically. You just come in with these uh, sliders and move them around. I'm going to give her a really tiny nose to contrast with her very large eyes. So we'll bring her nose width in. Um, give her a little bit of a smile. So you could give her a frown <laughs> or a smile. It's kind of creepy in a way, isn't it? Um, so we'll give her a little bit of a smile. Should I give her larger lips or thin, thin lips? Let's go with thin lips again. It will contrast those huge eyes like that, then mouth width, kind of a tiny mouth like that as well. And again, you could have fun. So if you have, you know, a loved one and you just want to kind of, you know, mess around with a portrait of them uh, just for fun, um, it's something you could do. And this is like obviously now a caricature of whoever this woman was. Uh, it's an Adobe stock file, so it's not an image that I've... Uh, that I've uh, that I actually took myself as someone I know, uh, so we could mess with her forehead a little bit too. Her chin. Let's bring her chin in. Let's see if we bring her forehead in too. 
Yeah, we'll do that as well. Again, I'm trying to make her eyes super big and all her, her other features may be diminished uh, against her chin. And face her. And something like that. So you could see that with the face aware liquify, we really could create a character of the person, a cartoon like image. Um, and I'm going to click OK. And then we'll do a before after. There's the original image. And there's after. Before, after, before, after. So again, uh, let me know in the comments what do you think of liquify? Personally, I really don't like it um, because those of you that have watched my videos know that I prefer to do a minimal amount of processing on a model or a subject in my uh, images. For instance, if they have a mole, I leave the mole. I don't remove it. I'll just remove more transient things like a, like a pimple. I'll remove something like that. And I don't really uh, like to mess around with their actual um, face structure or anything like that. I prefer that if anything gets enhanced, it gets enhanced with makeup. For example, you can make uh, someone's eyes look very large. If you have a makeup artist or the person knows how to apply makeup properly, you can make their eyes look larger than they actually are with makeup. And I prefer that instead of doing it in Photoshop in post. Uh, that's just my personal preference. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. It's just the way I like to to go about doing it, maybe because I'm lazy, I don't want to do a lot of work on my computer. That could be it. But let me know your opinion. I'm interested to hear it and have from have some fun with Liquify. Um, it actually can be a lot of fun just to play around. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.